So, what is the SS Baroon? The SS Baroon or Baroon Gast was an Astro Hungarian passenger ship. The SS Baroon was operated by this ship company, which I cannot pronounce, and was built by the Gurley Brothers Shipyard in Dundee, United Kingdom. The ship was named after the former Austrian Prime Minister and Interior Minister Paul Gosch von Parkinson. SS Baroon and its sister ships were built for the so called Dal Dalmantin Express Line, a route that went south of Austrian Revelria, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, and along the coast of Istria and Dalmatia. The ship was 84.5 meters long, 11.64 meters wide, and had a maximum draft of 7.5 meters. The ship had three heated steam boilers with heavy oil that powered three bronze propellers via one steam engine. The engines themselves had 4,600 horsepower which allowed the speed of 70 knots. Lloyd hoped to significantly increase the ship's performance with the installation of three steam engines. But when that didn't happen, Lloyd returned the ship to the shipyard for extensive modifications and trust it. But at the cost of losing the Gurley Brothers shipyard. This was one of the reasons why the Gurley Brothers shipyard went into bankruptcy and had to be liquidated in October 1910. With the outbreak of World War I on the 28th of July 1914, all merchant ships in Austria-Hungary were put into the military service of the Austro-Hungarian Navy. On the 27th of July 1914, Barun Gash was pressed into service with the Navy. This was followed by four sailings on which Barun Gash brought supplies for troops stationed in Kotor. Barun crossed 1,810 miles and transported 2,855 people on each return trip. Civilians were evacuated to the ports of the northern Adriatic. On the 11th of August 1914, Barun Gast completed all of its military tasks and was returned to Lloyd. Before Barun sailed one last time from Kotor and back to Trist, a conference of war naval authorities was held in Trist. SS Barun's second officer, Tens, was present as a representative of Captain Paul Winter at the conference. The commanders of ships were informed that the Navy planned to set minefields in the northern Adriatic in order to protect the entrance of its main naval port, Pula. This will be an important part of the story later on. Tens informed his captain about it, so the first officer, Lupus, set the ship's route for the following journey. Later, the crew of Baroon received further instructions regarding navigation from military authorities in Zadar via radio. On its way back, SS Baroon was carrying refugees from territories of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I don't know how to pronounce that, but I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. People that were coming back home from holiday including many women and children and as well as members of the Austro-Hungarian military that were on their way back to Austria. On the 12th of August 1914, SS Baroon sailed from Kotor to Trist for the last time. On the 13th of August 1914, at 11 o'clock a.m., Baroon gushed departed from the harbor on the island of Beli Lujinc and was sailing directly to the port of Trist where it was scheduled to arrive at 6 o'clock p.m. From Beli to Lujinsh to Pula, the ship was officially sailing under the command of the first officer, Joseph Lopez, but this was not the case in reality. In fact, Lopez was handed over command by the captain in 2 o'clock p.m., but he left the bridge without the captain's knowledge. Handing command to the relatively inexperienced second officer, Tens, and went to lunch with the first class passengers, Captain Winter was asleep in his cabin. Now, you probably see what's bound to happen. 
SS Barun began sailing much further north than the military authorities had ordered earlier and passed near the ship Prince Pohe Loheum, which was sailing south to Dalamatian Islands, more than three nautical miles away from the coast. Even warnings by several passengers did not cause Tens to change the ship's course. Tens made several references about minefields in surrounding areas and how Astro-Hungarian Navy had placed them to protect the port of Pula, but that did not make him change course. At 2.45 p.m., several nautical miles from the Berijuni Islands, Barun Gash entered at full speed into a minefield that had just been set by the naval or navy forces. At this time, the mine layer Besilinsk saw Barun Gash sailing directly into the danger zone, so it gave the SS Barun warning signals. But the signals were not noticed or understood. At the last moment, Tenz recognized the mistake that he had made and tried to turn the ship and back into open sea. But this would have not mattered since SS Barun was already in the middle of the minefield. The first mine struck the ship, triggering a huge explosion on the port side of the ship, followed by another explosion from the boilers. This understandably caused Barun's passengers to panic. Many of Barun's passengers rushed for the lifeboats and others dove off the ship and hoped to be rescued by the lifeboats that were lowered or was able to be lowered. SS Barun sank within 5 to 7 minutes after the first explosion. Meanwhile, the Astro-Hungarian destroyers Chisipel, Triglav, and Balaton were nearby, so they were one of the first ships that came to rescue the victims of the disaster. Together, these ships saved 159 people from the water. However, 127 passengers, mostly women and children, and crew members were killed. They were buried in the military cemetery in Pula. The wreck of Barun Gust was found on the 15th of August 1958 by Slovenian diver Bozo Dimnik in 28 to 40 meters deep on sandy and stony ground. It is overgrown with algae and sponges. The wreck is not in good condition because it was broken in many places. The chimneys and masts are folded over and in addition, the three propellers that once propelled the huge ship were removed. And that ladies and gentlemen was the story of the SS Baroon. And into back, and SS Baroon sank within 5 minutes and 7 minutes. After the first explosion, the Astro Hungarian destroyers Chisipel, Tra. Tri, the Ash. However, Slovenian 